so Google Plus, like I've said, is uh, another social network. It has various aspects of what we've seen with Twitter and what we will see in Facebook and what we will see in Instagram and so forth. So uh, I'll go over a general overview of the interface and then um, we'll get into the specifics, how to use it effectively. So when I've logged into Google+, the first thing that it's showing me is on the left side here, Discover, but I'll get back to that. I'm gonna go here to Home. So we will see, I'm gonna write the various screens over here, explain them a little bit, and then show you how to use them effectively. So Google Plus uh, Interface, we got Home, Discover, Communities, Profile, and then in here also Collections, and then People, Notifications. So Home. Home is just like every other social network where you see the latest content of those that you are following. So keep up to date with content of who you follow. So if, I, if on Twitter I choose to follow 10 accounts, I'm going to see all of their tweets on my home screen. On Google Plus, if I follow two accounts, I'm going to see their content on home screen. Uh, Facebook, same sort of thing. If I follow various accounts, if I like their content, I'm going to see it on my home screen. So uh, I keep up to date with what's, what's new there. Discover, like Google, uh, like Twitter trends. See what's hot. What topics are people chatting about in Google Plus? What ideas can I get to latch on to to get on the bandwagon about in Google Plus? And what's popular on Google Plus may not necessarily be what's popular on. Facebook or Twitter or Snapchat, etc. Each network sort of has their own culture, their own um, style and demographics. Uh, people often come to the class and, and ask that early on about, well, who uses this, who uses that, who's the network designed for, etc. I don't answer that right away at the beginning because I believe that while a network might be predominantly focused on one topic, I believe that you still will be able to find the audience that you're looking for if you, if you, if you try to find it. Uh, so I'll cover in detail demographics of the networks a little bit later. Uh, but just note that, for example, here on Discover is a good place to see, to get an idea of what the uh, culture and style of the network is. Communities. Places where people congregate on a topic. And again, I'll go into these in detail in a moment, but just in general, these are places where people come together on a topic. Profile. Your public uh, link about your account. Collections. It's inside of profile. It's not on the main menu here, but I just put it here as part of it. Uh, collections. Uh, groups. Grouping. Groupings of your content. So I can group together if I keep uh, posting on a certain topic, um, like breakfast, uh, breakfast treats for Victor's Bakery. I can group them all together into a collection. If I then put um, a lot of content related to you know, birthday, birthday treats. I can put those together in a collection. We'll see how in a little bit. People, your connections, who you follow, or who follows you. A notification updates on the network. Who followed you? Who liked your post? who replied to you, that sort of thing. So 
all of the networks have very similar things. All of the networks have some sort of home screen to keep up to date with the latest. All of them some, have some sort of discover or trends. All of them have a profile about what your account is. Uh, notifications. The one that's the most unique here is communities, which is vaguely like hashtags in Twitter. Vaguely in that it's um, people congregating on a topic. So looking at it in general in this account, on my home screen I have the messages of those that I've been following in this account. Yes? Um, real quick, I just uh, want to make sure so I sign in with my name at Google Plus and then I can make like a business page? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, we'll be covering that in a moment, yeah. So the uh, discovery tab, that's the first one that we saw here. This is like what's hot, what, what are people talking about, trends and all of that. Um, at the top also some keywords, comics, psychology, Doctor Who, etc. So. I can then go look at a specific topic and it pops up over here. This is everything about drawing and, and art, so all of this content. Okay, communities. So various communities listed here. Profile your own information people, your connections. Okay, so in general, this is the um, this is the general interface uh, on Google+. Uh, to use it the most effectively, you probably want this set up as a business. So making the note here, many of these networks have this feature. Many networks have you create a personal profile and then you can create business pages. Notice the very subtle distinction in keywords there. Profile versus page. So personal profile is the person that uh, you know, is this is my account as a person for fun, keeping up to date with funny things, friends, that's profile. Well, business page then is important for, for the business, right? There's a couple of ways to do it. Um, after it's set up, if you notice here, on the top right corner I can click on my uh, icon and then here is the various businesses that I also help manage. So I've got my own personal page, my own personal profile where I can look at the fun stuff that I'm interested in and then I can switch over to the various other business accounts to manage them. Now to set this up the first time is a little bit weird but then after you set it up it's just a matter of switching between a company. I can go up here and switch to this company and then I'm, I'm going to use it as that company. So I switch between. Now, to set it up, here's the weird part. So let's go to the address business.google.com. plus.google.com logs you in and lets you switch between the accounts. But to create your business account, your business page, we first go over here to business.google.com. This is after you've done a personal profile? Yes, after the personal one, yeah. So again, depending on how your um, 
de depending on how yours is set up, you may see the same thing as mine or not. Because I've already got accounts set up, my screen automatically looks like this with some data. Let me just look over someone's shoulder to see what it looks like if you don't have anything set up. Where's your location? Most of the location is right here. So, you will see some phone number that says, uh, yeah, make the most of Google, so we, we we'll click that button, yeah. If you see a green button there, make the most of Google, I, I can't exactly show you that same screen myself, because I've already got it set up. You only see it the first time you, you've got it, uh, but try to, I think maybe I can go over here. Um, So I might not be able to see the same screen as you, but try to go through that screen. Uh, How, um, where is the street address going to be displayed on the account? Because I don't know. Yes, uh, I'll talk about how to deal with that in a moment. So should I leave it now? No, no, don't add it. Uh, let me explain. Okay. So some of you may see then, uh, add your street address. Well, I don't want to add my street address if my business is, is coming from my house. Um, that one, if it's asking you for a street address, that would be like, yes, I have a business on Main Street, so I want to put my address there. If you don't want to do that because you've got a different um, sort of business in terms of um, I'm a plumber. I go to you. You don't need to come to me. That's on a different screen. I just need to find it because they, they change the interface sometimes here. So let me just go back here one moment.
So I'm not finding it obviously here. I need to keep looking for it. So it's, it seems to be at the moment, because these networks change every once in a while, it seems to be that it's asking to create a business with an address, um, which again, for some of us, I, I don't want that. I don't want my address to be in the system there, because it would be public. There should be a way to create this without a location, but I'm not finding it right away, and I don't want to waste your time, so I have to come back to it after I look that up. But um, I guess for the moment... Well, it gives you the option, I think, after you, your address would you like to show or not. Oh, it does it? Yeah. Where? Right after you enter it. After you enter it, then it gives the option to put it in. Huh, okay. Hmm, okay. You select I deliver goods and services to my customers. Check that. Oh, hide my address. Okay, great. Got it. Okay. And anyway, for my. Um, for my purposes, I might just put it fake. So if it let you, because I'm trying to put a fake address as well, it's not really going to let me proceed. Uh, but if you um, are able to set yourself up, that's good. If not, one of the things that I have noticed for Google Plus is that um, because it is so tied to a real location, uh, sometimes, depending on what kind of business it is, like right now I'm just trying to set something up to show you what it looks like. It's not going to let me because I am putting a fake address. It won't let me go through. Uh, so I'm not going to be able to go through that process. Um, so if you were able to set yourself up, good. Uh, I'm going to proceed after that as if I have set it up. So So let's say after I uh, create the account, what I want here is one of the most valuable things uh, in Google Plus about reaching the audience is communities. So I noted here the various screens of Google Plus. One of them is communities. So I'll say here, the best way to use Google Plus for your business is to use communities. Communities are uh, where people congregate on a topic, as I said. You can find the right audience there. So let's see how communities work. Um, if you manage to create the, the business one or the personal one, uh, we can still look at it. Uh, so right here we'll go to communities. The way I've got this uh, here in my case, okay, it says recently visited your communities. 
in this particular account, what I've got is this business account has joined these various communities. Now, as an example here, I'm going to search at the top here. I'm in communities, and then at the top I'm searching, let's just say cookies. I'm going to search and then just press enter. I'm going to ignore those suggestions because I want to show that you search a keyword, get various results. You get results in all posts, communities, collections, people, and pages. So when I look at it all, I see all of this stuff over here. Well, communities right here. Cakes and bakes, baking, recipes, desserts. I see all of these communities on this particular topic. And it would say, for example, 125,000 members, 1 million members, 113,000 members. So these are you know, thousands of people joined together on a specific topic. If I um, click on one of these, let's say the first one, cakes and bakes, sweets and treats. I'm not going to click join. Don't click join on any of these. If you just click on the, the icon of the collection of the community, uh, what happens is then it goes into the community and it shows you here's this these various posts um, about this topic. So I see all of this, lots of tasty stuff making us hungry. And um, 125,000 members. The point of this is on any of these social networks, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, remember how I said that once you create an account, um, no one knows you exist. No one knows you have this Twitter account or a Facebook or a Google Plus unless you make yourself active, unless you make yourself known. And I mentioned that in Twitter, when you search and when you reply to people and when you follow and like people's stuff, you make them aware that you exist. One of the things that Google really has as an advantage is that you can quickly find a great audience for your, for your business and brand in communities. Here I have an audience of 125,000 that in theory are interested in my topics of cookies and baked goods and all of that. So Holly Stevenson over here posted something and all of these people can see it. Angel posted this and all of these people can see it. Sonia posted this, Kushi posted that, Marsha posted that. People are posting into this community and in theory all of the subscribers will see that captive audience. I want to post into this community so everyone sees my, my, my Victor's Bakery stuff. So when I click join a community, I now have the option here, this little pencil, which wasn't there a moment ago. I was not able to write in this community. I was not able to contribute to this community a moment ago. But now that I've joined, I can click the pencil and I can write what I want. I can add links, I can add photos, I can add products, coupons, I can add deals. I can try to reach the audience that cares most about this product, my products, because I'm in the right community. The point is search for communities about your business brand topic join those communities to be able to post to that captive audience and have a better chance of success. Most of these social networks, when you post anything publicly, it goes out to the whole network, 
But if no one's following you, no one knows you exist, you're, you're kind of talking to yourself, no one is there to, to listen. But if you uh, go to a community, you have that captive audience. Same thing like if I were to stand on a street corner and start talking about my product, everyone that's walking past might hear me, very few people will care. If instead I go to a, a mixer or a fundraiser or a networking event on a specific topic and start talking to people there in that networking event, those people are most, inter most likely interested in what my uh, product is if I go to the right network event. Digitally here in Google Plus, this is the same thing. I will say here, however, If the idea is, I'm gonna, I, I did a search for cookies and I found 12 communities all about baked goods. Okay, great, I'm gonna join them all. I'm gonna join them all so that then I can uh, market myself on all of those, or advertise myself on all of those communities. However, when you join communities, you will see the posts in your home screen. So if I've joined 10 communities, all of the stuff that's being posted in those communities will show up on my home screen, which may be a lot of stuff that then I have to wade through. Whenever you go to that home screen, whenever you look at your home screen, all of the posts will show up there. Another, however, some communities ask you to join before, or ask you to join, ask you to join before you can post. Some communities simply say join, I click join, I'm in the community, I can start posting my stuff. Some of them have the button that say ask to join. In those communities, a moderator must approve your application to join. They will check your profile first. If I've created a brand new Google Plus account and I'm trying to join a community that says ask to join, someone is going to check, well, who's this person trying to join? They're going to go look at my account. They're going to see I have nothing posted, nothing in my biography, nothing to show that I am a legitimate contributor to the community. When we talked about Twitter last week, remember I said one of the things you want to do before you try to get followers is to set up your account to show what you're about. And this applies here as well. So you should have your Google Plus account set up much like Twitter with a biography information. And one to three posts. Remember, for Twitter, I said you want your you want your logo in your um, in the in the little graphic area. You want a little bit of text about what your business is. A little bit so that people can see what is your business. But you also want content. On Twitter, I say, well, you should tweet one or two or three or four times uh, to, to show potential followers what are you about. I'm going to be tweeting deals. I'm going to be tweeting tasty photos. Well, I need to do that on all of the networks, on Pinterest when we get to it, on Google Plus today, on Facebook. I need to create some content first to show people what they're in for. So if someone were to visit my um, my you know, my profile screen, is it filled out? Do I have content or not? That's the big idea. Question. Uh, 
So if I uh, click on one of these communities, do they know I clicked on them? Nope. They won't know that, that you're previewing the community. Uh, just if you click join, then, then they'll know. Yeah. So also, uh, aren't you also sort of preaching to the choir as well? In the sense that if you're cooking, hmm. find a community about cooking. You are, but that's not a bad thing. That's what you're doing in the real world too. I have a sports drink that I want to market. So I want to market it to those at the gym. I want to market it to those that are uh, runners. So yeah, it, it is preaching to the choir, but it is necessary. I do want to reach the audience that would care most about my product. I wouldn't put my cookies and baked goods and all of that in a pet community, unless it's you know pet cookies and stuff. So I would go to the communities that is most relevant to find the right audience. Yes? So are you asking to join from your Google Plus account or for your So, so this is the part that I, I couldn't quite show exactly um, because they changed the interface. At the moment, I am in my business. On the top right corner, I switched from personal to business. So there's my personal one right there. So depending on which one you are currently logged in as, that's the one you're joining the communities as. And most likely, you want to join them as the business. Now, it could be valuable to also join as a person, because then you have two ways to market your content as two different accounts, doing it judiciously, properly, etc. But the main idea is that, yes, you want to be logged in as the actual business, and then you can join. So follow-up, can you do a profile on the business page also? You can, and, and that's what I, I'm trying to show here, but they've, they've changed it. So there is going to be a way here somewhere, maybe under Manage Account, there is a whole profile that you can set up for your business where you're going to have your logo, you're going to have your biography, your phone number, and contact information. It is there. I, I can't quite find it, but it is there. Okay, so... Um, there's the however's part. I'm still talking about that. It's very important. Uh, so here then, um, adding to the answer that I just gave also, uh, most likely you want to join communities as your business. Another consideration to think about here is read the rules. Every community has some kind of rules about them. <clears throat> you can preview the rules before you join. I'm in this community, and on the left side, gives you a general overview. What's this about? There is then a an about community, and depending on the community, there's going to be a little bit of text or a lot of text. So it says, this community is for everyone, whether you're a professional or just love baking. Please don't spam. This isn't a page for you to promote your business. It's for recipes and tips. Oh, well, I joined here because I was going to promote my business. And they're saying right here, this is not the place for that. So I could choose to ignore it, or maybe I never read it, and then I'm going to um, post self-promotion. Well, there could be consequences on that leading to the next point. Read the rules. Because the moderators have discretion over your membership. So I'm going to join this community. I'm going to then start self-promoting, self-advertising. Uh, a moderator that controls the community sees that and says, hey, you're breaking the rules. And you could have a variety of consequences in terms of you get a message from the moderator saying, oh, please remember that there's no self-promotion here. OK, that could be the best case scenario. Worse, worse result could be you get that note from the moderator, and they delete your, your post. Worst case scenario they remove you from the community. 
worst 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 case scenario, they remove you from remove you from the community and ban you from it, and you cannot come back into it, and you lose then access in this case to 125,000 members. So just like the classic bulletin boards, news groups, and all of that, there are rules on these communities. You could get a friendly reminder about a broken rule. You could get your post removed. You could be removed temporarily from the community. Or you are banned from the community. Yes. So if, if I join a community with 125,000 followers, mm -hmm. then my homepage is subject to the postings of 125,000 people? No, not your, not, not exactly your home page. Your, your, prof, your profile, you know, your profile is still yours. Your content only shows up there. What I mean is that when you um, when you do subscribe on the home page, on the home stream, yes, it'll show up there. That's why I was saying about I can join 20 communities. But then all of the posts from all of the people that are active in those communities are going to show up on my home screen, which can then be pages and pages and pages of stuff. So do I, do I care what's on my home screen? Not really. Okay. Um, if you do use the network to keep up to date with things, uh, and, and you have like way too many things coming at you, you might care. If you're using it more as a self-promotion tool, you might not. So uh, it just depends on the person. Uh, do I care about so much stuff, so many updates? And it, it, you may not, then that's fine. So it's okay to just ignore that home page if you're following 800,000 people on 10 communities? Sure. Over here about, okay, well, the why of all of this. Um, fans in Google Plus create and moderate communities. Therefore, they are in charge. As long as the community does not break the general Google Plus rules. So I can create a community all about Star Trek and have people coming in and chat and share all about Star Trek. And then I decide, oh, well, I, I don't like that Star Trek character that this person post, posted a picture of. I will decide to delete that post. I can do that. I created it. I'm not violating anyone's free speech because it doesn't really apply in these terms in a social network here. So I can guide my community, I can shape my community how I want, it's my community, as long as I follow the general rules of, um, of Google+. Plus. Um, I could decide what stays in the community or not on my whim. And for example, this community here of, of, of the baking, I can see, okay, who's in charge? Whenever you're in a community, you can click on the icons here about the members. You click on that, it will then show you here are the current members, and there's lots and lots and lots and lots of members, 125,000. Or I can click at the top here and say, show me who are the moderators, who's in charge. In this case, there's one person in charge moderating 125,000 members. So that's a big endeavor. There's often one to ten people moderating a community, especially ones with hundred thousands. So um, I did see one or two off-topic posts here and there that they haven't gotten to yet to remove. Um, but yeah, Holly, the owner, she's the only one here. So um, in this case, there's only one moderator. Owner. There's owners and moderators. So. Let me go look at another community just to compare it. I'll search again exactly the same cookies. This time I'll go to a different one. I was in Cakes and Bakes. I'm going to go over here with a million members. I'm going to click on that one. I'm not going to join it yet, but I'm going to go look here. Who are the moderators? OK. 
Cadbury and Jerry Dakin. So apparently the official Cadbury company is the owner of this community. And then there's one moderator trying to corral one million members. Um, what are the rules on this one? If I scroll down about share and discover the most delicious recipes. Please note this page is no longer actively managed or moderated. Oh, OK. Well, actually, this one's then the Wild West. Anyone can post whatever's on topic or off topic. And, and the problem with that then is there could be a lot of spam and junk on a community if no one's actually in charge of it. Let's see some more examples. Uh, this one, recipes and desserts. only one member as well. Okay, so the point here is um, let me see if I find a better example. Let me go off to just to show an example. Here's an Android community. Two million members. Okay, about uh, brought to you by whatever, while we want the community to be rather loose, here are some things we don't want to see. Spam. Linking or referring to anything not Android related. Okay, that's one thing. Advertising another Google Plus community. This community doesn't want another community to, to advertise it. Okay. Nudity. Racism or hate speech. Pirated software. Direct links to apps. Okay, so they've got their rules here. If you do any of these, they can do those various steps. They can tell you nicely you broke the rules. Most likely nowadays, because so much spam, there will be no, no warning shot. They will remove you from the community. You broke the rule. You didn't read it. You didn't care. Ignorance is no excuse. You know, these moderators have often a lot to work to deal with, especially with two million members. So often it's guilty until proven innocent. Uh, here, there's lots of moderators. That's very good. They're keeping the community on track. If you break any of those rules, you may get a friendly message. You may get the unfriendly. You may get booted out. Then I lost access to potentially 2 million eyeballs, or you know, 4 million. Um, so communities are great. I really like them. But you really need to adhere to, to their rules, especially if they are actively being managed, you want to make sure you follow their rules. Yes? So if I join the first meeting exactly that we had as Victor's paper mm -hmm. uh, how could I make a post without kind of breaking their rules? I, I do have to read their rules and understand them as best as possible and post following their rules. I could possibly also try to contact the moderators first and say, here's what I plan on posting, here's what I'm about. Uh, I think that's too much extra effort and such. I, I would just say, you know, uh, read the rules, follow the rules. Um, yeah, as Victor Frederick, I post something like, uh, oh, here's my favorite, one of my favorite recipes, and that kind of skirt the, the rules a little bit. I would say yes, personally. But again, I, I don't know if the moderators then are going to have more of a heavy hand and say, oh, you're trying to skirt the rules, demerit. I, I don't know. So, um, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. But um, yeah, th there are downsides, and it, it really depends on the community and the moderators. I have had that experience, not really for clients, but for myself. Um, I've uh, Google Plus is is one of my my personally one of my favorite networks. I use them all because I like to keep track. Uh, I like to keep up to date with all of this. But the one that I like to spend the most time on personally is Google Plus. I've met a lot of interesting people, a lot of fun stuff, and I'm active on Google Plus. But there has been one or two communities where I think I'm following the rules and I think I'm doing it right and then uh, I get banned or, or noted or something. Um, like uh, uh, there was a photography community. I thought I was sharing the 
uh, along the right lines that they were looking for. And then I realized, oh, I just I got kicked out of this community. What happened? And then I saw that a lot of other people were saying, hey, why did you remove me from the community? So it seemed like the lone moderator had a very, very you know, iron fist about how they were running their community, and they were kicking people out for, for whatever infraction they perceived. So I wasn't the only one. This person was running it that way. Um, recently, again, like some video game community, um, I thought I followed their rules, and I did it how they did, and then my post got removed. I didn't get banned, but my, my one post got removed. So I then contacted a few of the moderators, and I said, hey, I thought I followed your rules and everything, and I didn't do the self-promotion, whatever. And then someone still found a way to nitpick and say, oh, well, you did this. So I'm like, okay, well, uh, that particular moderator felt that way. So it's those are some horror stories but it's like very 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 low possibility that that happens as long as you follow the rules uh, you don't act like a jerk you don't do you know spam sort of messages about click here to buy something to think in terms more about of um, what's useful what's interesting what's funny as we go through the course we will talk of, co of course about how like how to communicate and, and all of that but that depends also on your business maybe as a CPA I communicate on these networks in a certain way as a daycare center I communicate a certain way so it's gonna that voice of what your business is on these networks is going to depend on your business but as we go on through the course I, I'll, I'll give tangible examples of how to use the networks which might not apply to every single person I'll say one more thing over here. You can create your own communities. And I'll say, don't create your own communities. So if you are trying to post your content on one of these baking communities and it keeps getting removed, you say, okay, well, I'll create my own community where I can run things my own way. The problem with that now is now you need to be a moderator. You need to keep things in line. You need to um, delete the spam. And you need to get people to join your community. Why would I join your community of 12 people if I can join one of 12,000 people? So then now you've got to do the extra work of, hey, everyone, come to, my, come to my cool community where everyone else is already there and established. So create your own communities because now you have to be a moderator. have to get members, have to do more work. So I don't, I don't recommend it. I don't recommend creating your own communities. Um, join a community that does exist. Follow the rules, stay on their path. You should be able to then um, get good results. So after all that negativity, tip, yes, join as many communities as you can, but note the, uh, the, the topics above. And try to join communities of at least 1,000 members. You're going to find many communities that are pretty small, 200 members, 90 members. I don't think that's a big enough gene pool to sustain anything meaningful with communities that small. You want to go with them with, you know, a thousand or so or more. These of 120,000, okay, great. That one of two million, there's the opposite side there. Um, being in a very small community is not enough people really to be potential clients. Huge communities perhaps are too big, you'll get drowned out. So somewhere in between the huge range of 1,000 to 1 million members, somewhere around there you'll find your community. Try not to join communities of more than 1 million members. Too small not enough potential clientele too 
large, you get drowned out by everyone else. So much stuff is being posted to that community. Your stuff is going to have a very short, um, you know, a very short attention span, a very short um, shelf life. People aren't going to see your content for very long. There's something new every every minute or every day or something. Also, try to join active and legitimate communities. What I mean by that is before you click join on any of them, you should browse the community a bit. Even though it's got 120,000 members, okay, this one of 29,000 members, let's take a quick preview of it. Okay, so I do see food-related stuff. This does not seem to be a food-related post. Okay, food. It's pretty much all food. That's good. Okay. You know, the worst ones are that it's just overrun with spam about, you know, uh, download this, free software, um, Cialis, blah, blah, blah. So you don't, uh, you don't know what the community is, if it really is an active and real community, unless you browse it. See, there's that exact same post again. She must be popular. So this doesn't seem too bad. It does seem, oh, there she is again. Uh, this does seem to have like relevant things in the community. Let me see another one over here. So there was one that said it, it was not no longer active anymore, right? So I'm looking through this one over here. Cakes and bakes. Um, is that salmon? Or some sort of fish. I wouldn't classify that as baking. So some communities seem to have a lot of members, but then they are overrun with spam. Therefore, you don't want to get in there because actually the community is kind of dead. It's just junk there that no one is paying attention to. But you also want to see in activity, not just content, but perhaps also looking at the times. Notice this one was posted one hour ago. One hour ago. 55 minutes ago. So that's active. That's good. Some communities, even with like, let's say, 10,000 people, nothing has been posted in two days. For any community with that number of people, that sort of shows that it's not quite... Um, Active people are there, maybe spammers are there, but not legitimate people. And also, as you look on these various posts, you can see below them if there are any replies or comments, you will see comments. If there are likes, you will see the icon in Google Plus, it's it's called a plus one. So if you like it, this has got 19 likes. It's got one share, so it got passed on to more people. Let's see what else. This one over here, 10 likes, 26 likes. That one's got one share. Try to join active and legit communities, meaning content posted reasonably recently. Content that has activity, which are comments, plus ones, shares. If a community simply has a lot of members and a lot of posts, that still might not be that great because there's no activity. People are just coming in, dropping their thing, leaving, and not actually seeing what else is there. So active communities, in, in the same thing like in real life. If I join a networking group, and everyone that comes to the network group just comes in, leaves their business card on the table, and leaves, well, that's not meaningful. A networking group where people come in, talk to each other actually, 
communicate about a topic, exchange real information, and then a business card. Okay, that's a legitimate networking group in real life. Same thing here digitally. People are active, people are posting on topic. Those are the most valuable communities. So let's say I'm a social media company. I want to get hired to run social media. If I do, if I search for social media, I have various communities here. 157,000, 48,000, 171,000. All of these so far seem to say simply join. And as you go further out here, the, the communities get smaller. So social media advertising, 663 members. Probably that's a little too uh, small to really be useful. Kim Garst is a big name in the world of social media. She has her own community. Checking that out there, it says simply join the rules here. Learn how to grow your business. Okay, this is a community for business owners who want to learn how to grow their business in today's social media. I'm very passionate about the fact that you can do social media. This is not the place to spam your personal links. Let's see who the moderators are. So she's the owner, but there's other moderators. That's good, keeping things on track. So I'm looking around. There's some posts two days ago, three days ago, 20 hours ago. <coughs> not, a, not a huge amount of activity. This looks like some spam here that hasn't really been dealt with. Same one here. So this would be an example where it's um, 41,000 members, but maybe it's not really as useful as, as it seems just by the numbers. Okay, we'll take our second break in a moment. The big idea for this, for this is that communities, search for them, think about joining them, think about being active in them. After the break, then, we'll talk a little bit about actual content creation, a little bit of do's and don'ts about creating content, focusing, of course, on Google Plus today, but what we talk about today will also apply back to Twitter, which will apply forward to Facebook, and so forth. It's 11.46. We'll take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at um, 11... Uh, 56.